Hi everyone, it's Shell from Shell Shell Crochet. Welcome to 2022. Here's my January update. Michelle, how are you today? I hope you're all doing well. And we made it to a new year, right? Uh, it's been a while since I've been on and I thought I would come and show you what I've been up to in January. First of all, though, just a little bit of admin, is that what we call it? <laughs> I just want to let you know that uh, you can obviously reach me here on YouTube uh, in any of my videos under the comments if you ever want to leave me a comment. You can also reach me on Instagram. That link is always in the description box of every video and also on my about tab. And also by email at shellshellcrochet at gmail.com. That's the best way to get a hold of me. I am not doing Facebook this year. I'm taking a year off Facebook. I only used it for groups. So I've stayed in all the groups I was in. They're all crochet groups. But I am just logged out for 2022 to see how that feels. Um, just want a little bit of a break from social media. So we'll stick with just Instagram and YouTube for this year. So what can you expect in 2022? You can expect that you will see me at the end of the month. It will typically be sometime after the last Wednesday of the month, and you will hear more about that later. Uh, there are a few months where Wednesday, the last Wednesday of the month is too late, so we will work with that. But sometime in that last sort of, you know, five-ish days of the month, I will come on and show you what I've been up to um, that month. I'm gonna focus on finished objects. And I am going to show you one or two whips, but not definitely not all the whips. Uh, I want variety in my life in 2022, so I'm going to have a little bit more whips. I was being pretty monogamous with my crochet last year. So this year I will have a little bit more on the go. Some of you may recall that we have this thing in my family called February birthdays, and it usually keeps me quite, quite busy. However, this year I'm not really doing much crochet at all for February birthdays, but I do have a couple of secret projects as a result. And so those won't be shown, right? And I think as it goes for gifts, I may just not talk about them until they can actually be shown. So even if I make something in April that's for May, I'll just wait till that time has passed and then I'll pull it out and show you it when it's done and not be so focused on letting you see that I did something <laughs> extra that month. Let's talk briefly about goals. I'm not gonna do anything formal for goals this year. I know what they are. Uh, the number one thing is I am not buying yarn this year. Uh, I may get involved in a couple of swaps here or there. They will have to be stash swaps if I do. And I may get gifted yarn. Wink, wink, hubby. Anyway, um, <laughs> I mean, Valentine's Day is coming up, right? But I, um, I want to focus on the yarn I have. I have been very generously gifted yarn in the last couple of years and I want to focus on the yarn I have and decide what um, that's going to become. That's some of the things I've already got an idea of what I want to try doing with it. Um, and we'll go from there and, and you'll hear more about it throughout the year. And another thing that I'm going to try and do this year is do things that push me out of my comfort zone a little bit uh, to focus on the learning. I want to have a lot less deadlines than I did in 2021 and the deadlines stemmed mostly from me uh, wanting to make things as gifts. So there might be a little less gift giving that's crochet this year, which is fine. And also I had a lot of orders to start off the beginning of 2021. So I think that's what got the ball rolling and it's quiet right now and I'm happy to have it quiet. Um, and we'll just see how the year progresses. I do want to learn things. So um, as we go through today's video, you'll see that uh, there are some things that are new to me, which I really like. And this is going to be, you thought last year was a lot of blankets. This is going to be a very blanket heavy year for me. That's what I feel like making. That's where I see some of my yarn, uh, especially some yarn that's accumulated in the last couple of years. Um, 
where the opportunity is going to arise for me to be able to use the same kind of yarn for an entire project, which I really like. And I also have some scrap projects in mind just because I love how they look. Uh, I'm going to try to incorporate a couple of tips for you. Some people don't need any tips from me because there's a lot uh, more experienced people out there that can give you lots of tips, but I just want to let you know a couple of things that really worked well for me in 2021 that I'm keeping and something I'm not keeping. Let's go with the one I'm not keeping first. I did a lot of projects using the Magic Knot. Uh, that's not the really fancy one where you use a needle and, and sew it in. I think that one's called the Russian Joint. That's not the one I'm talking about. I'm just talking about the Magic Knot. There's several different tutorials for it out there. Uh, in the beginning, I thought it was cool because it made such a smaller knot, but as an end result, I don't trust it. So I am going back to my regular way of knotting yarn together, which I learned from Jada and Stitches. And it's simply when you just hold two strands of yarn together and then put a knot in the sort of base of them and pull really tightly on both. I pull really tightly on both just to get that knot as small as possible. And usually it's pretty easy to hide it. Uh, and I go from there. So that's about the knots. And then the ones that I like, uh, the one that I started doing quite a bit is a stacked double crochet. Uh, again, there's lots of videos for it out there, so just have a look. But it's just basically where you chain one, turn, single crochet into that uh, first stitch, and then single crochet into the side of that first single crochet. It's just a little bit less bulky than just chain chaining one and then pulling up a loop so you can just double crochet, which I do like that one too, and they both have their place. But uh, especially for ripples, I really do like that stacked, especially for grannies. Uh, it works really well for me and it looks good. The, um, the one where you just pull up a loop and do a double, it's kind of a wide stitch, so they're both okay. And I know there's another one out there where you have to do a fancy twisting thing, and that one just seems way too way too much time for me but those two um I, I will use continue to use interchangeably so one tip for you that's stemmed from me playing with all my yarn and organizing stuff is I don't know if you guys have any of those plastic bags that either yarn comes in if it's a kit or if it's um from a comforter or sheet set um they are great for scrap balls and um, don't get me wrong, these are not like my tiny scraps. My tiny scraps go into like a magic ball and then I can just use it wherever. But these are scraps that will make great grannies. If I need a color for something, I can go in and grab it. But they're, and they're, you know, it's, it's decent yarn. So here is my scrap bag of bigger balls. And what I love about it being in here is I can turn it upside down, it doesn't matter. And I can see all the colors that are in here pretty easily right so and what I do to keep my balls um, together is I just take a hook and crochet or just pull the loop under a bunch of strands that are nice and snug in there so that it doesn't come unraveled and for the most part it works if it rolls around a lot or if I didn't roll it particularly tightly to begin with it might come undone a little but it's no big deal and uh, anyway I just love being able to see the colors in there so that is how I'm storing those balls for this year and I'm pretty sure most of those <laughs> are gonna go into a granny project that's gonna last throughout the year I haven't started it yet but if you saw Debbie from the Canadian crotch Hunters recent video I am very very interested in that two color granny pattern uh, so yeah, go check her out if you haven't already seen it, because that is a cool pattern. So I think I'm going to make a whole bunch of grannies on and off throughout the year, and at the end of the year, they will become a blanket. So I have been spending quite a bit of time pulling out my yarn, figuring out how I best want to display it so that it's in my face and I see the opportunities I have with it. And it's been going really well, but it's nowhere near done yet. And when it is done, if people want to see, I don't mind uh, spinning you around. <laughs> Most of it's uh, on the other side of the camera and showing you what I came up with. But I definitely have a strategy in terms of where I can see all my regular words of weight acrylic and, and things like that. I got all my variegated together and it's it's coming along, but I still have more work to do. And it's um, it's challenging for me to do that because I have a, a lot of arthritis, but, you know, little baby steps and it'll get done one day. Um, probably over the next week or so, I should be happy. Also, just so you know, in the description box of each video, you're going to be able to see sort of the title of the finished object, any tutorial if there was one, and a little bit about the yarn. I'm not going to go through a big description in the description box of the actual project because I'm talking about it right now in the video, but if you need a link, that's where you'll find it, along with a lot of links to a lot of great people in the yarning community. Hopefully that's enough information. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. 
Um, but yeah, that's what I've got in mind for 2022. I really want to enjoy my crochet. And so far in January, I really have been. And considering that I do have two deadline type things on my hook presently that are both still whips, I'm happy about that. Shall we get to the things I've finished? All right, so finished object number one. I did not get her done by Christmas, but I got her done. This is a, a ripple blanket and I used a tutorial by Bella Coco. I love the way it looks, but I have a hard time with this pattern. It doesn't feel as easy as I think it should be. And I'll talk more a little bit about that when you see another thing I'm working on. Here we go. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see, like, I mean, I'll try, but <laughs> I'm gonna disappear, ready? So this is made with Mary Maxim Starlet Sparkle in red, green, and silver, or gray. And here we go. This is pretty much the part I had last time. And then from this chunk of gray into these wider bands is all new, all the way back down to the very bottom where I finished the way I started. Hopefully that's on the camera because I can't see. Anyway, uh, I'm really happy with how it looks. And I learned something about in this blanket. So mostly for blankets that I'm keeping for myself, I just, um, I chain a whatever amount I want. If there's a repeat, I just make sure I chain that repeat one more time at the end in case I need to pull out any stitches uh, once I get there on row, uh, the official row one. And um, that's how I decide the width. I don't need to count a specific amount of stitches. So this was cool because whatever I ended up with, which is gonna probably be too wide to fit on the screen. Maybe not if I lean like that. It's pretty decent width, right? Um, it ended up being that each one of these stripes and solids, so this is four rows and this is four rows, uh, took one 100 gram ball of this worsted weight size four yarn. So once I figured that out, the gray came in huge, huge skeins. I showed them already when I got them. Um, and these were the regular 100 grams. But what it taught me was, so for that 100 gram worsted weight size, which a lot of balls typically come in that or in the close to 200 gram range, the bigger skeins, um, it makes it very easy to know exactly how much yarn I used. So this blanket was 1400 grams of yarn. So cool. And I know that that will come in handy for me with my scrap projects because I really like the width of this. So um, yeah. I'm going to use that for going forward to plan out colors and things like that. I also used a six millimeter hook with this blanket. Um, that's kind of on the small side for me. Uh, I don't know why, but in 2021, I was using smaller hooks again with blankets. I love a seven millimeter hook with a regular worsted weight yarn. Uh, but if you wanted a smidge warmer, then just go down a little. So I've done quite a few in 6.5. This one was a six. And last year, I know I made one or two with 5.5 as well. So that was number one, and I had to keep bargaining with myself to stay on track with that. This was my sort of holiday project this year. It didn't get finished until January, but it got started because the yarn was gifted to me by my mom for Christmas. <clears throat> so this is Ogo yarn, Red Heart Super Saver Ogo. Just a corner to corner um, rectangle blanket, baby blanket. And the variegated is called Jewel Tones. And I think that the solid is just called gold. And it was a slightly different color gold than the actual gold in the Jewel Tone uh, Ogo, which worked okay because these two, I don't know how well it's showing, are um, slightly different tones of the same color as well. And when I saw this Ogo in the, the um, what do you call them? In the circle? <laughs> When I saw it, I didn't really love those colors too much, but they look awesome together. And I don't know if you can tell, but the darkest color is like a claret or a burgundy. And yeah, just a simple corner to corner brick stitch or what other people call that stitch? Um, I, learned, I learned this border stitch as a brick stitch. So yeah, I like it. And that will go in the make ahead stash. And while we're on corner to corners, another gift for Christmas was four skeins of Burnap Bounce Back, which I believe is a fairly new yarn, from my friend Crystal at Ricola's Crochet Corner. Hi, Crystal. And because it was a bulky weight yarn, and because I had the four of them, I wanted to just use it all together. So that's what I did. I did a lapgan, uh, corner to corner again. And here she is. Oops, dropping. 
and this one got adopted by hubby so he loves it he has it on the couch for him and uh yeah there you go <laughs> so those two are done i'm sure all of you enjoy watching lisa and cindy when they go live and um i get such a huge kick out of them i can't always be there for the whole time but i like popping in here and there and checking out a little bit uh where i can and on replay and stuff and lisa was talking about making these dickies and i thought I thought that was so cool because I was sort of doing the same thing. I didn't really know what to call it at the time, but I was just trying to use this one uh, Karen Cloud cake that Crystal had given me. And because it's so soft feeling, I just wanted to use it in one project. And when I saw how thin it was, I wanted to use it double. So that's what I did. I ended up making one and pulling it out and doing it again. There's not much difference, but I'll throw it on for you here for a sec. So here we go, ready, presto. Change-o! <laughs> anyway, it's just perfect for me for crocheting on the couch. Uh, I did this with... <laughs> does it get buried in it? I did this with a bunch of different hook sizes to make it um, more loose and wider as I got to my shoulders. Uh, I started with a 6, 6.5, 7, and even 8. Held double, uh, mostly double crochets, a little bit of single at the top, which I came back up for later. It come, It can, like, you can tuck right into it. If you can still hear me <laughs> and uh yeah i love it it just ke keeps the chill off the back of my neck when i'm sitting on the couch and i main mainly just wanted it for that so it didn't have to be perfect i did look at a few tutorials first and nothing was really grabbing my attention so i just wanted to use all the yarn in one project and that's what i did so i'm not sure if you saw all the ones uh, that lisa and Cindy were making but they look great i love when lisa gets on a a project she just keeps making them <laughs> The uh, another another one she had by Ruby Baby um, is really cool looking. I'll have to consider that at some point if I find the right yarn for it. But I really liked how that one looked. Um, and speaking of Lisa and Cindy, I might as well take a pause for the cause here because I don't have anything to show on this. But they are doing the Best Buddy Blanket Cal, I think is the name. The proper name is in the description box and it may appear on the screen as well. And this is a uh, crochet along that they are doing, which is a pattern by Glenda Creative Grandma that I know has the name Winter in it, but it's escaping me the full title right now. So I'll just throw it at the bottom of the screen. It's already in the description box of this video as well. It uses eight skeins of Premier Puzzle Yarn. I do have about seven of those, and I also have um, a bunch of the Loops and Threads equivalent, which the name escapes me right now, Charisma maybe. Um, but they're all kind of a hodgepodge of colors and quite frankly I like keeping my bulky weight yarns for making hat and cowl or hat and scarf sets um, especially when they're those marl tones like that they seem to be quite popular and they look great with pom-poms so I'm going to keep the bulky weight yarn for that because I don't have a ton of it and what I'm planning to do is a double stranded project with acrylic and I I really like the look of this blanket being more of a wintry neutral tone thing so I can pull that off at a stash no problem and I also like the idea of doing it in solids um, with rainbow colors um, the stitch is going to be interesting for me because I always have trouble when I have to do chains in between stitches uh, that are part of it because my chains are too tight <laughs> and I work on it don't get me wrong but it is a struggle I guess I always learn to pull on the yarn and it's really hard to unlearn that after this many years. But anyway, I digress. Uh, you will start seeing that blanket next month. It'll probably be done. I don't think it's going to be a huge blanket, but I'm looking forward to sort of jumping on the bandwagon, although um, not exactly. I know a lot of people were uh, grabbing some of that yarn and it was a great deal. I don't know if there's any still available, but it is a great deal from Aberdeen Wools at the time. $5 Canadian a skein, so uh, if they have any left... That is an awesome deal. Anyway, so that is one cal um, that I am going to be participating in and it'll be probably wrapped up fairly quickly. Oh, and one of the other funny things I saw was uh, Lisa really doesn't like to try to dig out the yarn in the center and I will do anything for a center pull. Uh, I do not like the yarn coming from the outside. I, I can't stand when it's flopping around all the time and I don't care how much yarn burf I get. I will dig in, especially on those bigger skeins, which can be a nightmare. They're really big, like one pounders or more, um, but I will dig in there and I will find it and I will untangle that yarn. I don't mind. But the really funny part was about the cakes. So I do have a tiny little clip that I'll put at the end of me, the center pulling on a cake for a project that I'm working on right now, just for Lisa, just for fun. <laughs> okay, so my last finished object, uh, 
to show you right now was just a scrap project using a single ball of yarn that I got from Debbie ages ago and it was a lime brand yarn but I don't really remember much more about it it was a fuzzy black and white ball and the first time I tried to use it it didn't go well and so I had to pull it out and that was problematic so it must be maybe like a bit of a roving yarn um, but I held it double with a mandala and I just did a traditional double crochet back post hat I did not use a pattern for this but it's only because I've made so many of these as either hats or cowls uh there's lots of patterns for this hat out there put a white pom-pom on the top sewed a button on the inside and it's nice and loose so you can put it uh turn up the brim and I will put it on for you so here we go again so there it is I'll just turn my head so you can see it's got a nice nice brim and uh it's not really to fit me it's a bit small for me how i like my hats i know you guys probably remember i like them really loose but uh it's not bad it's got a good stretch and with holding those two yarns double i ended up using an eight millimeter hook for this hat so yeah so the one real whip i will show you um this month is it comes from i mentioned last time that i pulled apart a, a poncho that i had held double and I have come up with a use for some of the yarn. This was the Bernat uh, Softy Cotton, baby cotton, that I pulled out. And I have a lot of it. And I'm in, it's in this project bag I got from my little brother. But I am making a tablecloth. It's not huge because it's for our coffee table, which is a glass table. Um, out of the, I don't know what this is called. Do you call this stack shells? Do you call this modified granny? I don't know. Instead of working in between the holes, I just work in the top of the stitch. So it's just grannies where you work in the middle of the third stitch. I would say stacked shells, right? And yeah, so you can see my ends already in the one side. And that will be great because that's, um, I think, 60-40 cotton and just a nice neutral color for our table. And this is just a mindless, when I feel like it, no pressure, gets done when it's done type project. It might be done by the end of February. It might not. We'll see how it goes. I also like how compact it is because if I'm going somewhere and I just like I went to my mom's with this a couple weeks ago and I just grabbed it and it's got extra pockets so I just stuck the hook in there and we went on a journey and did a couple of rows while we visited which was great. Okay so the last couple of things I'm going to talk about are two crochet longs that are going to go for the entire year. Uh, the first one is Jaden Stitch's Totally Tunisian Calendar Blanket. And I have never, ever done uh, Tunisian crochet in my entire life until the month of January 2022. Um, it's a little terrifying and a little exciting, but we're getting there. Um, I did end up buying the hook set that one of the ones Jada recommended. What I did first was I ordered the crow hook. It was strange um, because it, even though it was completely sealed in its package, it didn't seem new. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's had that happen from Amazon before, but that's what happened with that. And also it was, it was not quite, but it was awfully close to half the price of this. I was trying to not like dive in too deep on this in case I didn't like it. Um, I'm still suspicious that I might've done better with the hooks that have the little uh, cord on them. But Jada said, if you're new to it, that you probably shouldn't do that first. So I didn't do it, but we'll see how it goes. Um, this kit is awesome. Uh, the hooks are just okay, but the kit itself I love and I'll show you why. So here's how the hooks come. Eight millimeter down to a two millimeter. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if the last two hooks were actually the same size because they don't look any different when you pull them out and examine them. However, who, it doesn't really matter. I'm never going to crochet with a two or a 2.5 uh, Afghan hook. Uh, but it goes all the way up to the eight and I ended up using the seven for my project. And so that's the one that I'm going to end up using for the entire Cal. Uh, I figured I would go up. I watched some extra videos, um, TL Yarn Crafts I watched. So I've been trying to do a little research on Tunisian and I guess that's good and bad because I don't mind at all just learning straight from Jada because I know this is like this is like being a beginner which it's really hard to be a beginner when you know crochet so well because it feels like it's so much work but I also like the idea of forcing myself to slow down and learn something different so that's what I'm doing and I will show okay first of all the rest of the case so there's a whole bunch of knickknacks that came in here there is some um, plastic I don't even know what these are they're probably for knitting 
<laughs> I'm guessing that's what they're for. And then there's a bunch of the stitch markers. Haven't opened those yet because I don't need an urgent need for them and they can just live in here. There is some of these regular uh, plastic big eyed uh, blunt needles, which is great. And then there's like a little, I think, row counter or stitch counter, one or the other, this thing. Also, I've never used that before. It looks like it fits on a hook, so maybe it's a stitch counter. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, it was awesome. It came with all that. I love all the extra pockets. Uh, if you were a knitter, there's plenty of room on this side. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be for knitting needles just because it seems too small for crochet hooks. Um, but I love how there's all these little packets. Um, something's happening with these. I forgot to mention. Um, there are numbers on them. But only on this little white part here. So, but already having crocheted just the, the square and the practice, both of the hooks I used, the number's gone. So I just uh, wrote myself a little cheat sheet here by color. And um, that will live in that pocket. And I'll always know. I always also take a picture of them in order. But it's pretty easy to, to determine that. So I'm not too upset about that. Um, it would have been nice if it was like, I don't know, a sticker or something so that that didn't happen or they maybe put a sticker over it, but it just comes right off and you can't even see where it went. So the other side is what I'm super excited about. So there's so much space on the other side. Oh, also these scissors came in here and a tape measure, which was ironic because I had just bought a set of, a set of uh, two or three tape measures. But these little clippy type scissors, if I take that off, it's the pinchy kind. And uh, one of these type of tape measures where, you know, you can just pull it out and then it goes back in. So I ended up sticking my purple one in here and took the one, left the one that came in this as um, in the plastic it came in, in case I have a, a, a person to give that to at some point. And I have my entire set of clovers in here. So from the smallest that comes in the original metal all the way up to the six, that's over here and over here. And then the rest of them, I don't know if you can see that because I'm trying to look while I'm talking. Let me show you one side at a time. How's that? So on this side, I have the smallest of the metal hooks. And then over here, they continue all the way to the six millimeter. And then uh, it goes all the way up to 10 on this side. So I have my 6.5, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then over here in the big pocket, I have my 12 and my 15. And that makes me super happy. It's helping me stay very organized in the area that I crochet. I'm religiously putting them back because it's a new practice and I just want to make sure that I don't mess it up. And I'm really happy to have them in there. So on to the crochet. The link for that is in Jada's uh, video where she talks about the blanket. So that is that video is linked in the description box below. So here's my practice swatch, um, which is in cotton and uses a 5.5 millimeter hook. Here is the uh, Tunisian simple stitch, um, I guess front side or good side. And then here's my back. I, uh, I just played with a little bit of cotton on and off for a bit. There's definitely mistakes in here. I think there's probably more mistakes in my full square. Um, but the whole concept of this blanket, in case you haven't heard, is that we're gonna learn a new Tunisian stitch every month for 12 months. They're gonna be made into squares and then we're gonna join them into a blanket. So I don't mind doing a few dishcloths um, with the stitches to help learn. I actually didn't finish this until I was done my square. Uh, it was a little even more challenging working with cotton for me than it was with acrylic. So I'm kind of glad I did it that way. But I'm also kind of glad that I didn't mind picking it back up and finishing it after because I thought that was a good sign. Um, this took me hours, what I'm about to show you next. It probably took me close to five hours to do this square, which for me, that's very challenging <laughs> but here it is and it's not blocked yet it will be but she's rolling and one of the things i did do re the reason i'm using a seven millimeter hook for this guy is because of some of the information i heard on one of the other tip tutorials that's out there i'm pretty sure that came from tl yarn crafts as well but anyway so here uh oh the colors i'm using two colors of bernat cozy style this one is just called teal and i'll show you the other one in a second it's called clay um, so I'm going to just use two colors. That's what Jade is doing. So I thought I'd go similar and I want this to be sort of a fall throw fall blanket, um, for our living room. Cause we don't really have a lot of fall stuff. So, and I'm just going to be bordering my squares with Bernat premium in taupe Heather. And I had a little scrap ball. So that's what I'm actually using first. Um, but yeah, I'm going to like how that looks. And then the other color 
I'll just hold it up with a square, is also Bernat Cozy style in clay. And I showed you this recently when I got it. I love this color. I think those are gonna look really cool together, especially with a little bit of that brown. So we'll see. I'm gonna do my best to follow the rules. I'm, I was dying to make the border bigger, like not just one round of single crochet, but not yet. I'm just gonna see how this unfolds and uh, we'll go from there. Even with using a seven millimeter hook, this is not measuring uh, 12 inches at all. Now Jada did say after blocking, so we'll see what happens after blocking. And yeah, anyway, here it is. Here's the front for this, as it is, the curliness of the front and the back. So I think not so bad for a first try and not so bad for sticking with it and, uh, you know, playing around until I got comfortable enough to say, okay, you got to sit down and do it now because soon enough, that February one's going to come out. <laughs> so I worked on that uh, a couple days ago, which brings me to my last cal that I'm going to talk about. And I heard about this uh, from Rose at Rose Likes Crochet. Hi, Rose. And it is actually being uh, started by Dina from Dina's Homespun Fun. And also the other two participants are Nancy from She's Got Yarn 2 and Z, Zelda, and RJ3. All their links are in the description box below. And it is a monthly temperature throw. And I believe that's what the hashtag is, but it will be in the description box. And because I am working exclusively from Stash, Mine is a little bit different, so I will post the pictures at the end of the video that are the colors I'm using. I got as close as I could get, and I may modify this um, one more time because I found green <laughs> that I didn't know I had, um, and I found it for in some Bernat Pop Cakes, and I don't mind pulling those apart because I've done that for Granny Square Blankets before, and they're very easy to cherry pick out colors. So I'm gonna relook at my list, and because it's the cold colors right now, that part I know is not gonna change, and I'm all good with that, but I may add in some greens and see if I can get any closer to their list. So I just got as close as I could get on the temperatures to make sure all the colors would get in the blanket, and uh, we'll go from there. So I have a huge tote where I'm gonna keep all my yarn, and the two colors I just showed you for the Tunisian blanket are also in this blanket so they get to all live together but here is January the other thing I'm doing that's a little bit different I am doing a border row if you, I guess you want to call it a border row but for this month that's got the bottom and the top because it's the start of it so I've never done the granny ripple before this uh blanket is being based on the granny ripple stitch and the tutorial by fiber spider which I did watch thank you Craig it was awesome uh, and it's my first time doing granny ripple now I got to make sure I get it the right way around here yeah there it is so this demonstrates for you what I said about not having to count the stitches because there's my little extra few chains I had once I got to the desired width I wanted. I just made sure that I had um, a few extra chains. Uh, this case you have to do 25 extra chains just in case. But for me it only, only really ended up being a few. And I wanted to make sure I could get seven because this is supposed to be based on taking the temperature once a week which is a really interesting um, take on doing a temperature blanket. It's a much much easier commitment. <laughs> But I thought it was cool to have seven, uh, seven little sets there, or seven peaks, if you will, to represent the seven days of the week. So I started with uh, two rows of the Erin, which is a scrap yarn. I don't, I couldn't even hazard a guess. It feels like Super Saver. And then all of these are different yarns. So I have a Burnout Premium in here, scrap for the denim blue. This one's called Ether Blue. I don't know if they actually still sell it. Got from Spinrite. This is like a grape tent sale yarn. And then this is a ball of comfort, uh, Red Heart Comfort in a bright purple. Um, but yeah, so that's January. And how I'm going to do it, because some months have five Wednesdays and some months have four, I'm always going to have five rows. And so the months that don't have five Wednesdays, I am going to pick the color that I think represents the overall month so far. Because my um, initial thought was, if I was doing this on Monday instead of Wednesday, the colors would have been completely different. We just happened to have some really warm Wednesdays to start off January, but it ended up working out fine. And uh, yeah, so the months that have all five weeks, I'll just follow whatever the high temperature on Wednesday at noon is. But if they only have four, then I'm gonna choose my last row to best represent the overall month. And that way I'll have seven rows every single month, five rows of color, two rows of border, and of course the extra at the bottom and the extra at the top just to round it all off. And it'll just be a nicer uh, size blanket. 
kind of what I wanted it to end up to be. So I took a lot of liberties. I hope that's okay, girls. <laughs> I don't want to end up in time out or anything, but uh, yeah, mine has to come from scraps. So this was really fun. It's nice to have a, a new project that new to me um, pattern, I guess you could say, that is really, really easy and that I know I'll make more of. So I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if I start talking about another ripple blanket within the next couple of months. So yay. I think we'll leave it there for today. That was a lot. <laughs> I hope you guys are all having a great 2022 so far. Uh, thanks for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. Have a great day and happy crochet. Bye. Hey everyone. This little demonstration is for my friend Lisa at Lisa's Crochet. Don't be afraid, Lisa. You can do it. I should mention it's easier if you only get to use two hands instead of one. <laughs> Here's the center. more blue on the inside or am I pulling it through I might be pulling it through I'm just gonna take it there just gonna take it from there there she is little end and that little part here will go in no time at all and we'll have a beautiful center pull but hey Lisa if you like doing it your way just do it your way